Welcome, friend, to this especially sacred part of the Olympian Sanctuary. My name is Varnavas, and I am a ship captain. Don't be fooled by my scarred eye. Though I've seen my share of combat, I mostly stick to trading these days. Well, trading and introducing visitors like you to wonderful sights like this. This place is practically vibrating with divine energy. I feel like if I look over my shoulder right now, Zeus will be staring back at me. The sanctuary of Olympia was dedicated to Zeus, king of the gods. It had close connections to the divine, as you will see very soon. I'll come find you when you're done, and we can talk about what you've learned. This workshop was built for the renowned sculptor Phidias after his work on the Acropolis of Athens. In 435 BCE, Phidias came to Olympia to begin working on the great Chrysolophantine statue of Zeus. He died five years later, shortly after completing his masterpiece. This grand statue would become one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Phidias's workshop was located right next to the Temple of Zeus. Its structure has been well preserved, mostly owing to its conversion to a church in the 5th century CE. Archaeologists have also discovered lots of ancient materials in the surrounding area, such as casting molds and sculpting tools. The most famous artifact, however, is a cup bearing an inscription that aggressively states, I belong to Phidias. On the fifth and final day of the Olympic Games, victors attended a ceremony where they were crowned with olive wreaths and showered in flowers. The crowns came from the sacred olive tree of Zeus, which was planted near the god's temple. A young boy trimmed the branches with a golden sickle before giving them to the Helenodikai to turn into wreaths. After the crowning ceremony, it was time for great feasting and celebration. Ma 
άφησε πάρα αυτά. Φταλμή μου πεσέβουσι. Pelops was both a legendary Greek hero and the mythical founder of the Olympic Games. According to legend, Pelops fell in love with the beautiful Hippodamia. Her father, Oinomaos, the king of Pisa, disapproved of their union. Having once heard a prophecy that he would be killed by his son-in-law, Oinomaos was known to challenge his daughter's suitors to chariot races, killing them when he won. Still, Pelops was determined to win Hippodamia's heart. Before the race, he enlisted the help of Poseidon, who gave him a golden chariot with four winged horses. Pelops was able to win both the race and the hand of his beloved, while Oinomaos was dragged to death by his horses. The start of this famous race was depicted on the eastern pediment of the Temple of Zeus. The Herion was a temple dedicated to Hera. It is one of the oldest temples in the sanctuary, dating back to approximately 590 BCE. The structure included columns painted with images of women who won the Heraia, an athletic competition made up of running events. Every four years, 16 women were chosen to make a veil dedicated to Hera. These women also organized the competition though they did not compete in it. 
The Haraya was unique for its focus on female athletes, in contrast to the male-exclusive Olympic Games. Hera was the goddess of women, marriage, family, and childbirth. She ruled Mount Olympus as queen of the gods, along with her husband and brother Zeus. Many mythological stories paint her as being annoyed at Zeus's many lovers and illegitimate offspring. In Greek art, Hera is usually depicted as matronly and regal, often wearing a crown or sitting on a throne. She is also sometimes seen holding a pomegranate, a symbol of both fertility and death. Hera's cult was very popular across Greece, and Olympia even minted her image on its coinage. One of the highlights of the Olympic Games was a ceremony that took place on the third day of the festival. It began with a procession of athletes, ambassadors, Hellenidikai, and animals. The group made their way around the Altis until they arrived at the Temple of Zeus. Then the animals were brought in front of the altar of Zeus and offered as a sacrifice. This sacrifice was known as a hecatome, a word that originally described the sacrifice of 100 oxen. During the hecatome, the bones and legs of the animals were burned and carried to the top of a mound of ashes from previous sacrifices. Meanwhile, the meat of the animals was saved for a large banquet held later in the evening.
The Olympic Games were dedicated to Zeus, and all the ceremonies and events were hosted in his honor. It is no surprise that the largest temple in the sanctuary was the Temple of Zeus. While most temples were restricted to priests, the Temple of Zeus welcomed all who visited Olympia. This openness was most likely meant to show off the gold and ivory statue of Zeus that stood within the temple's walls. The building also featured art depicting both versions of the Olympic Festival's founding myth. The eastern pediment showed a scene from the legendary race between Pelops and Oinomaos. The temple's metopes, meanwhile, showed the 12 labors of Heracles, the other mythical founder of the games. Zeus was the god of sky and thunder and king of the Olympians. He ruled the world from his home on Mount Olympus. The child of Cronus the Titan, Zeus overthrew his father and cast the Titans out in a great battle known as the Titanomachy. He had children of his own with his wife Hera, including Ares, Hephaestus, Hebe, and Ilithia. He also had many children without Hera, much to her consternation but there are too many to list here. Zeus was believed to have control over the lives of mortals, as his many epithets attest to. For example, his title Horkios made him a keeper of oaths, while Xenios was the name conferred to him as a protector of hospitality. In Greek art, Zeus was usually depicted holding a thunderbolt and sitting on a throne, befitting his position as king. The Temple of Zeus was home to the Chryselephantine statue of Zeus, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The statue, made of gold, ivory, and wood, was sculpted by the renowned artist Phidias. At 13 meters tall, it was as impressive looking as it was difficult to maintain. Oil was used to protect the wood and ivory from cracking and to prevent general decay. While the statue does not exist today, it was thankfully described by Pausanias in great detail, so its legacy lives on. Hello again! I hope you enjoyed your visit and feel a little bit closer to the gods. Well, as close as a mortal can get. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Farewell for now, my friend.